Uh, so there's a circle, okay? Uh, alrighty, now here's a line that goes all the way through the center of the circle. It goes through the very center point of the circle, and it goes all the way from one side to the other, okay? That, that line has a very special name. This, this distance from here to here has a very special name, uh, and it's called uh, D, okay, which means diameter. Okay, so it's a term you're, you're learning here. This is the diameter of the circle. All it means is it's just the, the distance, okay, uh, that goes through the center of the circle from one side to the other. It's called the diameter. Now, the distance just from the middle of the circle to the edge has a very special name. And we label it R, and that's called the radius of the circle. Now, these are two, you know, if you haven't been exposed to this stuff before, these two words even by themselves can make things seem kind of complicated or hard. But this is stuff that's simple for anyone to understand. You take a, a circle and you cut it exactly in half. Now, notice we didn't cut it here. Okay, we didn't cut it up here. It had to go exactly through the center of the circle. Then that distance here is called a diameter. And the half of that distance is called the radius because the radius only goes from the middle to the edge and the diameter goes from edge to edge. So from there you can see that the radius is just one half of the diameter, um, one half of the diameter. So let's talk about something very, very important. We're gonna talk about the circumference of a circle. Okay, of a circle, circumference of a circle. Okay, the circumference very simply is basically like the perimeter. When we talked about the perimeter of a square, we said, okay, if we walk around the edge of the square all the way around, how far would we have walked, okay? Circumference is perimeter. That's exactly what it is. It's just, uh, it applies only to circles. They picked a different word to use. You, you could say the perimeter of the circle, but nobody does. Everyone uses the term circumference. Circumference means if I start out at one point and I walk all the way around here and I have a tape measure and I figure out exactly how far I've walked, the distance I've walked is called the circumference, just like the distance was called the perimeter when we're talking about squares and rectangles and other stuff. So the circumference of any circle, okay, is equal to, and I'm going to explain this, something called pi times the diameter of the circle. Now, forget about what pi is for a minute. We'll talk about that. But it's some, something called pi times the diameter. That's why the diameter is so incredibly important. Now, because uh, the uh, radius is one half the diameter, you can also say that the circumference is equal to is equal to 2 times pi times r. So these are two different ways of saying the same thing. Pi times d or 2 pi r. Because look at it, two r's, r here and r here, 2 times r is equal to the diameter. So because it's pi times d, if you just take d out and you replace it by 2 times r, then you get this other formula, 2 pi r. Sometimes you use this one depending on what you have. Maybe you have the diameter in your problem and you have that, that number in your figure and you can use this number here. Sometimes you only have the radius and you use this one here. But in any case, if you're given the radius, you're just multiplying by two, that gives you the diameter. So it's, it's the same thing, okay? It's the same thing. Now, what is this pi thing? What is this pi thing? What is this, okay? Pi, uh, also, you can see it sometimes abbreviated with pi, pi, is uh, roughly 3.14159 and then dot, 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 okay? 3.14159. The digits go on and on and on forever, okay? And uh, basically, if you, if you take this, I'm going to explain a little bit more about what it is. Um, if you solve this equation, the c is equal to pi d, solve it for pi, then you will see that pi is equal to circumference divided by the diameter, okay? Now, in truth, the only real definition for what pi really is, is this one, okay? Pi is a very special number that, that we live with all around us. It's a very special number. And it, it, it means that if you take the circumference of a circle, however many feet it takes to walk around, and you divide by the number of feet it takes to walk across, every single time you will get 3.14159 blah, 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 blah in your calculator, and that's exactly equal to pi. Now, instead of writing this number down, people just use this very special symbol. Pi turns up everywhere, and I do mean everywhere, from geometry to algebra to calculus to quantum mechanics to every single branch of mathematics, everywhere, pi is involved. 
It's a very special number. Don't ask me why it's so special. I don't, I don't know. But in this context, it's in terms of, of calculating the circumference of a circle. Okay, so now we're going to work a few problems. Let's say you have a circle, okay, and they give you the diameter, and the diameter is labeled as nine feet. Okay, that's supposed to say nine feet. Nine feet. That's the distance across the circle through the center. And they say find the circumference. Well, the circumference is pi times the diameter. Pi, we said, was 3.14, and you can just sort of abbreviate it as 3.14. And the diameter here is given as 9. So 3.14 times uh, 9 is going to give you 28.26 feet, because we were dealing with feet. Okay? So that means if I start here and I go all the way around the circle and I measure how far I go, I'm going to go 28.26 feet. Now, the 0.26 is an approximation because we abbreviated pi here to two decimal places and pi goes on forever. So if you really calculate this, it's going to go on forever. But when you truncate it, it gives you a pretty good idea of the real answer. Okay. Now let's say we had another circle like this. And just to give you some, a flavor, it was two centimeters was the diameter then this, the uh, circumference of that circle would be pi times the diameter, which would be 3.14, which is pi, times the diameter here, which is 2. So the circumference would be 3.14 times 2, which is 6.28. And we're dealing with centimeters, and so this is just going to be uh, 6.28 centimeters. That's the distance all the way around the circle. So you see why this is really useful. Um, you can use this for all kinds of things. If you were building a swimming pool, let's say, a, a big round swimming pool, and you were building a deck around it, I mean, it's very useful to know how far around that, that swimming pool, you know, how much wood you need to buy to go all the way around that pool. Maybe all you know is the pool is 25 feet across. Well, if it's a circle, you can use this to figure out how far around it is without actually trying to get out there and, and measure it with a tape measure, which, by the way, is going to be really hard because it's a circle, and, you know, your tape measure is straight, so it's going to be hard to actually measure it. Okay? And the final one we'll do like this is we'll say, here's a circle, and here you're given a radius, okay, of uh, three meters. That's a radius, it's not a diameter. So because we have the radius in this problem, we don't want to use pi d, we want to use two pi r. Um, it calculates the exact same way and exactly the same thing, but since we're given the radius, we'll use that. So it's two times 3.14 times r, which is three, so the circumference is equal to 6 times 3.14, 2 times 3 give me 6, and so the circumference is when you take 6 times 3.14, it's 18.84, and we're dealing with meters, so this is meters. So this circle, if you go all the way around it, 18 meters long. Okay, now we're going to talk about the area of the circle. We've talked about the circumference, which is how far around you go. The area is just like the area of the triangles and the, the other uh, objects we've talked about so far. It's how much paint would it take, so to speak, to paint the circle. How much surface area does it have? So in order to figure that out, here's a circle. And what we're trying to do, and let's say this circle has a, a radius of, of R, okay, just like before. Well, what we're trying to actually calculate is how much surface area does it actually have, okay? And that's a very useful thing to be able to calculate. And so the area of a circle is simply pi times r squared. Okay, so you see pi comes up everywhere. It's just a nice number, and, it, and it's very important to circles and to other areas of math. Pi times the radius times the radius again, radius squared. That is going to be the area. So as an example, okay, as an example, you have a circle, and the radius is two centimeters, okay, two centimeters. Then the area is equal to pi r squared, which is equal to 3.14, that's pi. r is two, so it's two squared. Two times two is four, four times 3.14. So the area is equal to four times 3.14 is 12, 0.56, and I'm dealing with centimeters, and I'm dealing with area, so it's centimeters squared, because units of area always have square terms. So pi r squared, okay? And um, we'll do one final example here, and we'll say we have a circle with a diameter of 
10 feet. Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared, okay? But I'm not given a radius here, I'm given the diameter. But we've already said this is super easy to calculate. The radius is just equal to the diameter divided by two, because the radius goes from the center to the edge, the diameter goes the whole way. So if you take the diameter and you divide it by two, you're going to get the radius. So the radius is 10 divided by two, which is five feet, okay? So then using that number down in here, the area is pi times five squared, putting the five in here, five squared, equals 3.14. Five times five gives me 25. And so then the area is 3.14 times 25, which is 78.5 feet squared, because we're dealing with feet and we're dealing with area, so we have to have a square. So it's pi r squared in all cases, and we had to calculate the radius given the diameter, and that was the only real trick to this problem, and then take that and plug it back in and go from there. So here was a good introduction to circles, a good introduction to circular figures, circumference, and area of the circles. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.